हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर रवि टोटेजा एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन जोलॉजी फ्रॉम आचार्य नरेंद्र देव कॉलेज यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अ मॉड्यूल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ इम्यून सिस्टम अंडर पेपर इम्यूनोलॉजी फॉलोइंग आर द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ इम्यून सिस्टम in humans what are lymphoid organs structure and functions of primary and secondary lymphoid organs and then finally the role of lymphatic system in immune response the immune system is a complex and highly developed system yet its mission is simple to seek and kill invaders if a person is born with a severely defective immune system death from infection by a virus bacterium fungus or parasite will occur a lack of immune system also is the basis for die george syndrome improper development of thymus gland means that the t cell production is diminished organs of immune system the immune system functions throughout the body there are however certain sites where the cells of immune system are organized into specific structures these are classified as primary lymphoid organs and secondary lymphoid organs within primary lymphoid organs are bone marrow and thymus and secondary lymphoid tissues are lymph nodes spleen mucosa associated lymphoid tissues which are also called as malt m a l t blood vessels and lymphatic system connects these organs and unite them as a whole to function against the antigen primary lymphoid organs primary lymphoid organs are also called central lymphoid organs these are responsible for synthesis and maturation of immune competent cells and examples are bone marrow and thymus first we will talk about bone marrow all cells of the immune system are formed in the bone marrow during hematopoiesis the process of formation of blood cells bone marrow stem cells develop into either mature cells or precursors of cells that migrate out of the bone marrow to continue their maturation elsewhere the bone marrow produces lymphocytes b cells t cells nk cells granulocytes eosinophils basophils neutrophils monocytes and dendritic cells in addition to rbcs and platelets venous sinuses have some exceptional properties that other blood capillaries arteries veins don't venous sinuses are the vessels into which blood cells are released after being produced from the marrow cells these sinuses are barrel shaped and expand and contract to accommodate the variable production and release rate of the blood cells the sinuses either have perforated walls or don't have walls at all blood cells that are ready to leave the bone migrate to the sinuses and releases themselves into sinuses if there is a vessel wall present the new blood cells find a perforation and squeeze themselves through the opening usually the hole is too small for easy passage of the cells so blood cells have to force their way through the small hole size ensures blood cells already in the vessels do not readily get back into the bone marrow finally we have a reticular cells and fiber meshwork which forms the underlying scaffold for supporting the bone marrow cells and helping keep the blood capillaries in position the reticular framework basically stops the marrow cells from sloshing around and getting damaged when we move general changes in the color of the red marrow 
can sometimes be observed. If an individual is under challenge from a chronic infection, the red marrow changes to pale pink. The marrow switches from producing red blood cells to concentrating on making white blood cells. This may result in anemia as a side effect of combating infection. Thymus. The thymus in evolutionary term is the derivation of fish gills. The thymus is believed to produce lymphocytes which colonize the lymphoid tissues. This view is supported by several facts. Removal of thymus from newborn mice leads to the development of fatal diseases. Congenital absence of the thymus or athymic or thymic aplasia, that is, incomplete or defective development of the thymus, results in immunological deficiencies. In the adult, removal of the thymus leads to a diminished response to antigens. The thymus produces a hormone, thymic humoral factor, THF. This factor is believed to regulate lymphopoiesis in the thymus and other lymphoid tissues. Development of human embryonic thymus begins at around 60 days after fertilization. Size and complexity of thymus gradually increases. This differentiation will only continue for a certain period of time and then stop if it does not receive a stimulus to continuous growth. Immature lymphocytes begin to flop at and in the thymus of human embryo at about 90 to 100 days after fertilization. Most of these immature lymphocytes have come from the yolk sac and the fetal liver rather. In humans, thymus is a bilobed structure. In birds, the lobes entirely separates into long nodular sacs, one on each side of the jugular veins. For humans and most mammals, the thymus lies at the top of the heart at the vertical midline of the body in the thoracic cavity. The lower part of the lobes rests over the front of the heart and the top of the thymus wraps around the windpipe each of the two lobes of thymus are enclosed in a capsule. Within each thymic lobe is a structured organization of lymphocytes and reticular cells. The lobe is divided up in a rough honeycomb appearances by membranes called trabeculae or sometimes septa, which extend from the outer capsule into the thymic lobe. Each division of the tissue by the septa is a lobule. Each lobule have an outer layer of darkly staining cells called a cortex consisting of cells which turns out to be lymphocyte cells mixed with many blood vessels and an inner cold called medulla consisting of some lymphocytes but predominantly epithelial cells. Immature lymphocytes arrive in the thymus through a single artery. Similar to the bone marrow, the thymus has a closed circulatory blood system, one entry and one exit point. The blood vessels have several physical layers surrounding them called the blood thymus barrier. This barrier consists of membranes, connective tissue and cells which play an important part in restricting which cells are allowed to cross into the medulla of thymic lobules and which cells are flushed straight through the thymus. The blood thymus barrier is known to be much weaker where the vessels pass through the medulla of the thymic lobules and the cells crossing to and from the vessels can be observed in this region. Cells do not apparently cross from or to the blood vessels in any other area of the thymus. Immature lymphocytes are allowed to pass from the vessels into the medulla tissue and only mature lymphocytes are allowed to pass back into the blood vessels. Once the immature lymphocytes have passed the blood thymus barrier, they are called thymocytes. Over 90% of all thymocytes are found densely packed 
in the cortex region of lobules with just just 10% of thymocytes found in the medullar regions. These cells are at different stages of maturation. Cortex thymocytes are the most immature and medullar thymocytes are close to complete maturation and preparing for release back into the bloodstreams. Of all the immature lymphocytes that enter the thymus, only 10% leave as fully differentiated cells. The rest die at some stages during the maturation process in the cortex or medulla. Clearly, vast number of immature thymus dependent cells must be produced by the bone marrow to ensure the enough cells leave the thymus to maintain the adult immune system. It is here in the thymus that education of lymphocytes takes place. The bone marrow produces lymphocytes that can attack wide range of antigens, including antigens of our own cells. The bone marrow makes no distinction between these lymphocytes that will benefit us and those that could harm us. Immature lymphocytes are unable to respond to any antigenic challenge, so their migration from bone marrow to the thymus is uneventful and of no consequence, good or bad, to us. This form of cells is then educated in the thymus. There is a dispute over which cells in the thymus are the instructor or educator. Some say it is the epithelial cells. Others say the education comes from the population of dendritic cells found in the thymus that are possibly a subgroup of phagocyte cells produced in the bone marrow. The educating cells present own antigen to the immature thymocytes. Those that are able to respond to the presented antigens die. Those that do not respond are assumed to be protective and are beneficial for us and will mature to leave the thymus. This is called negative selection. Lymphocytes are also exposed to MHC molecules and those lymphocytes which can recognize MHC are selected and can move out of the thymus. This type of selection is known as positive selection. There are some problems however. The cells in the thymus do not have all our antigens available to use in educating thymocytes. Some antigens form specialized organs such as brain and hair follicles are not present in the thymus. In summary then, this thymus is the educator of T cells into a viable defense force and removes non-compliant and dangerous self-reactive immature T lymphocyte precursors. Secondary lymphoid organs. While primary lymphoid organs are concerned with production and maturation of lymphoid cells, the secondary or peripheral lymphoid organs are sites where lymphocytes localize, recognize foreign antigen and mount response against it. These include the lymph nodes, spleen, tonsils, adenoids, appendix and clumps of lymphoid tissues in the small intestine known as Pierce patches. They trap and concentrate foreign substances and they are the main sites of production of antibodies. Some lymphoid organs are capsulated such as lymph node and spleen while others are non-capsulated which include mostly mucosa associated lymphoid tissue malt. Spleen. The spleen is made up of B cells, T cells, macrophages, dendritic cells, natural killer cells and RBCs. The spleen filters antigens directly from the blood and passes through it and migratory macrophages and dendritic cells bring antigens to the spleen via the bloodstream. An immune response is initiated when a macrophage or dendritic cell presents antigen to appropriate BOT cells. In the spleen, B cells become activated and produce large amounts of antibody.
the spleen has a thin connective tissue capsule from which short septa extends inwards. These septas are in turn connected to a complex reticulin framework. There are two distinct components of the spleen, the red pulp and the white pulp. The red pulp consists of large number of sinuses and sinusoids filled with blood and is responsible for the filtration function of the spleen. The white pulp consists of aggregates of lymphoid tissues and is responsible for the immunological function of the spleen. Red pulp. There is a complex system of blood vessels within the red pulp arranged to facilitate removal of old or damaged RBCs from the circulation. A small proportion of the splenic blood flow passes through more rapidly without undergoing this process of filtration. White pulp. The white pulp contains B cells, T cells and the accessory cells. The purpose of white pulp is to generate an immunological response to antigens within the blood. The white pulp is present in the form of periarteriolar lymphoid sheath. This sheath contains B cell follicles and T cells. At the edge of the T zone is a region known as marginal zone where larger lymphocytes and antigen presenting dendritic cells are located. Another secondary lymphoid organ is lymph node. The lymphatic system parallels the circulatory blood system. It is periodically guarded by lymph nodes which are found throughout the body. Composed mostly of T cells, B cells, dendritic cells and macrophages, the nodes drain fluids from most tissues. Antigens are filtered out of the lymph in the lymph node before returning the lymph to the circulation. In a similar fashion as the spleen, macrophages and dendritic cells capture antigens and presents them to T and B cells, consequently initiating an immune response. Lymph nodes are small bean-shaped structures lying along the course of lymphatics. They are aggregated in particular sites such as neck, axillae, groins, and paraireotic region. Lymph nodes have two main functions. Phagocytic cells act as a filters for particulate matter and microorganisms. Antigen is presented to the immune system. Lymph nodes have a fibrous capsule from which trabeculae extend towards the center. The node is made up of three components, lymphatic sinuses, blood vessels, parenchyma, which is divided into three parts, cortex, paracortex, and medulla. Cortex. In the cortex are present B cells. B cells enters the lymph node via high endothelial venules, HEVs, and pass to the follicles. If activated by antigenic stimulation, they proliferate and remain in the node. Unstimulated B cells, however, pass out rapidly from the node to return to the general circulation. Activated B cells within the lymphoid follicles are known as follicle center cells. The pale staining central area of secondary follicle is known as germinal center and this is surrounded by a mental zone consisting of small nave B cells and few T cells. The follicle center cells within the germinal centers consist of cells with cleaved nuclei and cells with larger, more open nuclei and several nucleoli, stimulated mature B cells responding to antigen change into centrocytes and centroblasts. The centroblasts leave the follicle and pass to the paracortex and medullary sinuses where they become immunoblasts.
the immunoblasts divide to give rise to plasma cells or memory B cells, which are ready for the next encounter with specific antigen. In addition to B cells, cortex also contains accessory cells. Lymphocytes alone are not to make the effective immune response. They are resisted by so-called accessory cells. These may be grouped as follows. Sinus macrophages, tangible body macrophages, marginal zone macrophages, and follicular dendritic cells. Now coming to paracortex. The paracortex contains lymphocytes and accessory cells along with the supporting cells and it is the predominant site for T lymphocytes within the lymph node. T cells, the various types of T cells enter the nodes from the blood via HEVs. When activated, they form lymphoblasts which divide to produce a clone of T cells responding to a specific antigen. Activated T cells then pass into the circulation to reach peripheral sites. Accessory cells of paracortex contain interdigitating cells which are numerous in paracortex and they act as antigen presenting cells. Medullary region. The medulla comprises large blood vessels, medullary cords, medullary sinuses. The medullary cords are rich in plasma cells which produce antibodies that pass out of the node via the efferent lymphatics. Macrophages are also numerous within the medulla. Now coming to lymphatic system. Lymph passes into the node through efferent lymphatic into the marginal sinus, though the cortical sinuses through the cortical sinuses to reach the medullary sinuses before leaving via the efferent lymphatics. Particulate matter in the lymph is removed by the macrophages. Antigens are taken up by the antigen presenting cells and these facilitate the specific immune response. Less than 10% of lymphocytes enter the node in the lymph, the large majority entering the blood via the HEVs. Lymphatic recirculation. Lymphocytes and some mononuclear phagocytes can recirculate between lymphoid and non-lymphoid tissues. This helps in allowing lymphocytes to be exposed to the antigens which they recognize and is therefore valuable in the distribution of affected cells of immune response to the sites where they are needed. The recirculation is a complex process depending on interaction between the cells of immune response and other cell types such as endothelial cells. Virgin lymphocytes move from the primary to secondary lymphoid tissues while the blood activated lymphocytes move from the spleen, lymph nodes and malt into the blood and thence to other lymphoid and non-lymphoid tissue antigen presenting cells such as macrophages and dendritic cells may carry antigen back to lymphoid tissue from the periphery. The complex patterns of recirculation depends on the state of activation of lymphocytes, the adhesion molecules expressed by the endothelial cells and the presence of chemotactic molecules which selectively attract particular population of lymphocytes or macrophages. Now coming to mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. In addition to lymphoid tissues concentrated within the lymphoid nodes and spleen, lymphoid tissue is also found at the other sites, most notably the gastrointestinal tract, respiratory tract and urogenital tract. Gut associated lymphoid tissue, this comprises tonsils, adenoids, Pierce patches, lymphoid aggregates in the appendix and large intestine, lymphoid tissue accumulating with age in the stomach, small lymphoid aggregates in the esophagus, diffusely distributed lymphoid cells and plasma cells in the lamina propria of the gut. Large aggregates of GALT, 
that is gut associated lymphoid tissue have distinct B cell follicles and T cells areas. Antigen presenting accessory cells are also present. Pierce patches. These are quite large aggregates of lymphoid tissues found in the small intestine. The overlying dome epithelium contains large number of interepithelial lymphocytes. These are specialized cells. Some of the epithelial cells have complex microfolds in their surfaces. They are known as M cells and are believed to be important in transfer of antigen from the gut lumen to Pierce patches by the process called as transcytosis means the antigen moves from one side of the epithelial of this cell to the another side without being getting processed within the cell. Pierce patches facilitate the generation of an immune response within the mucosa. B cell precursors and memory cells are stimulated by antigen in Pierce patches. Cells pass to the mesenteric lymph nodes where the immune response is amplified. Activated lymphocytes pass into the bloodstream via thoracic duct. These cells then home in the gut and carry out their final effector functions. HEVs are not present in Pierce patches and the mechanism by which cells home in mucosal site is unknown. So students, let us summarize what we have learnt in this module. Immune system in vertebrates is very complex and is made up of number of organs and cell types. Various cell types are generated by the process of hematopoiesis in the adult bone marrow. Immune organ system is divided into two, namely primary lymphoid organs and peripheral or secondary immune organs. Primary immune organs are bone marrow and thymus. Peripheral immune organ include spleen, lymph nodes, malts, gals, and within malts are Pierce patches also. Thank you.